afternoon and welcome to the Masai Mara. It's a great pleasure to have you here with these two sisters. They are cheetah, they're a long way away. And the reason why they are a long way away is we've strategically positioned ourselves here in the hope that they may try and hunt down some unsuspecting prey. Now, my name's Scott, for those of you who have never met me. I'm teamed up with Ferg on camera, and we've been out all day in the hope of spending time with Cheetah. We got lucky to start off by finding Malaika and her two boys. They weren't up too much. They'd killed an impala in the morning and were quite full-bellied, and we decided to head off and search some kind of new areas and explore some too much time and when we got back to where they were they were gone so we were very fortunate to pick up a, a, a report from some vehicles passing by that these two sisters were here and we arrived about half an hour ago and let me show you where the prey is just to give you an idea well should we start with the impala ferg so there's an impala over there that would be a very, very tasty snack this evening for the two girls. They're young, they're 16 months old. They only left their mother two months ago. So that's the one option. The other option that they could go for is a Thompson's Gazelle, which is over there. And just to give you a reference of where they are again, it's where all the vehicles are parked a little bit further up on the hill. Now the two sisters do not seem to be full bellied. And we have certainly got some wonderful, wonderful prospects for later on this evening. Ferg and I were driving around panicked after having lost our previous subjects. We're actually spending the whole night out and only intend to head back to camp tomorrow evening. So we plan on doing a kind of 36 hour stint out on the vehicle with Cheetah in the hope that we will be rewarded with some action for all the time we invest with them. most wonderful I'm told James is also out and about I'm not sure if you've been on his vehicle yet and he's going to be spending also quite a lot of time out this evening and coming back quite late after dark so we've got a big push to try and get as much action as possible John I'm very happy to hear that you love cheetahs so do I and I'm thoroughly enjoying being able to spend more time with them. I haven't spent much time with Cheetah compared to Lion and Leopard in my career as a guide, and I am falling more and more in love with them as the days go by. They are fascinating beasts, very, very beautiful to look at, and one thing I love about them is that their hunting techniques allow us to a kind of better opportunity a lot of the time to film and capture what they get up to compared to leopard and lion. Leopard and lion often are very short bursts, often in areas with a little bit more cover, whereas cheetahs hunting grounds make our lives, or at least Ferg's lives, a lot easier on the camera and being able to show you what goes down. Kanak, you would like to know if cheetah will hunt cooperatively to bring down their prey, and yes, they certainly will. There's a coalition of five males that we've seen doing that. We've only got a glimpse into the lives of what their hunting is like. But to give you an example of how hectic they are, they managed to kill an adult wildebeest on Friday, midday, and it took them half an hour to dispatch it. Now, that kind of sounds like a story about lion hunting buffalo. And if it wasn't for all five of them joining forces, there's no ways one fully grown male cheetah would have been able to take down a wildebeest of that size. And I'm fairly certain that these two sisters will also be doing a lot of cooperative hunting. They'll both bear down on prey and kind of one will maybe loop ahead or kind of through default end up being ahead and then the antelope may jinx to the side putting the other cheetah in a favorable position. And I'm really looking forward to seeing these girls hunt. I've seen them snacking on a kill that we just missed them make. That was about three or four kilometers north of where we are here in an area called Double Crossing. And they had just brought down an adult male Thompson's gazelle and they were just starting to feed on it. That was on Thursday afternoon as we were heading out in search of the five male, uh, the coalition of five male cheetahs. They've actually moved quite far away into the surrounding community, surrounding community conservancies 
and I had a feeling they were going to do that. I think they got stuck south of the Talek River because the there was quite a lot of rain in the Loiter Hills, which feeds the Talek River, which is a tributary into the Mara River, and I think that prevented them from heading into kind of their more usual territory. And now that the river's lower, they were able to cross. Oh, beautiful Ferg. So there's some rain along the escarpment, and there tends to be almost, not every afternoon, but most afternoons, there's quite a lot of cloudy, rainy weather along that Olololo escarpment. Our camp is somewhere probably just out of the rights of frame. Um, probably somewhere in the middle of the shot now is where our camp is nestled on the top of that hill. Or escarpment. Let's see if we can't actually find it. It will be visible or marked by one or two antennas, but maybe it's actually a little bit further north to the right. Anyway, that's where our home is. Oh, that's looking promising. There's an antenna, but it's quite hazy. So anyway, we've moved a long way to get to these cheetah, and I'm very, very grateful that the long journey has resulted in success and that we've managed to get lucky. John, you would like to know how old these cheetah are, I think, and it's 16 months old. So I'm told that they left 14, uh, left their mother 14 at 14 months, at so two months ago. And you're wondering actually when they will separate, not how old they were, how, how old they are. I'm not too sure, John. Um, I think they could probably stay together for another six months and then possibly split off, but I'm not too clued up as to what she to do, to be honest. So if anybody has any recent uh, or interesting research or documents that tell us about cheetah sisters and how old they may be when they split up from one another, because they certainly will split up, that you do know, John. Um, so my guess would be about another six months, there and thereabouts. Okay, Taylor, um, we are gonna send you across to Taylor in South Africa who's got some little feathered friends, and we'll be sure to call you back as and when these cheetah get active. Well, Scott, it's great that you had some cheetah. Thank you so much for saving the day. Now, we'd like to invite you to join us on our challenge of Spurfiles and Franklins. <laughs> Byron and I, uh, well, are participating in today. So, Byron, na 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 na. I'm on my third family of Franklins. <laughs> we still got the crested Franklins. Of course, we're just trying to make the best of the gloomy weather out here. Now, earlier Byron was discussing, I think very briefly, about spur fowls versus Franklins. And if we look, can we have a closer look at their legs? If we find, find them, you can see there that they've got little spurs. Can you see that? Look at those very sharp spurs at the back, very much like a chicken. And not quite as long, though, as a rooster's spurs can get. We used to have a rooster, his name was...